praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Pastor Tony Burke Brown coming with our word for today. Get your pen, get your paper, get ready so you can write down these scriptures so you can go back and meditate on them and do your spiritual workout. Again, don't forget our morning prayers at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the information is underneath this YouTube video along with the link to get your sit-ups ebook if you so desire. And so I want to go straight into the word today. We are going to be looking first in Matthew 25, but we are looking at a principle today, a principle, right? Oftentimes we are waiting for something to happen. We're sitting back. Um, people are waiting for, you know, a spouse. They're going somewhere looking for somebody to get in a relationship with. They're waiting for this big chance to come. They're waiting for, you know, sitting back, waiting for their big break, waiting for this and sitting back and either giving up on something that God has shown them to do or procrastinating or sitting back, you know, not doing what they need to do where they're at. What I'm saying is, is oftentimes we're not faithful where we are. We're not doing what we need to do where we are because when we're faithful where we are and doing the things where God has placed us for this moment, then the things that he has purpose for us manifest. So it's like when you're walking on that narrow path, you're walking in the steps God has ordered for you, right? But then there's some things that you want. You want to get married. You you want this type of job. You want to, you know, go and venture out into this. And many times people find themselves straying away and getting distracted by the thing that they want, or they get tired of waiting and sit off on the sidelines. But the principle that we're looking at today is this. If you are faithful right where you're at, if you're doing what you're supposed to do right where you're at, if you're faithful, if you're diligent, if you're doing everything heartily as, as unto the Lord right where you are in the situation that you're in, around the people that you're working with, the people that you're co-laboring with in your home, uh, you know, whatever it is, if you're faithful right there, that's when that thing will manifest because you don't have to step out of the will of God in order for the things he has purposed for you to come to pass. And you don't have to quit and get weary and well-doing because if you don't faint, right, you will reap. And so this is what we need to look at in the verses of scripture today. And I saw over and over so many different examples, but I just want to show us a few. But first, I want to look at Matthew 25 because we are reminded of the servants that and we've read about this before. Um, we'll look. Um, I don't want to read this whole parable, right? Um, verse 14 talks about the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And it tells us unto one he gave five talents unto, <clears throat> excuse me, two to another, and one to the other. And basically, as you go through and read this, what you find out is when this man returns from his trip, right? He comes back and the one that had five talents now has 10. The one that had two now has four. But the one that had one still just had one. He didn't do anything with it. He buried it. And so he was called a wicked, slothful servant. But the other two, when they doubled what was given to them, this is what was told them. Look in verse 21. It says, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. This is the principle. If we're faithful with what we have, where we're at, not complaining that we don't have enough, we can't do this, when is this going to happen? Not straying away from the plan and the purpose that God has for us right here, but right where we're at, right where we've been placed with the gifts that we have, the resources we have, the portion we have, the provision we have, that we are faithful with that. And then, and then, the other things come to pass because we've been faithful there. We can be faithful over someone else's things. We can be faithful when we're uncomfortable. We can be faithful with the little, with whatever it is that we have right now. And then whatever it is that God has for us will manifest. And so this is what I want to look at. First, I want us to look in Exodus chapter 3. 
in Exodus chapter 3, just beginning in verse 1. Now, we know that Moses was used by God to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt, right? But this is what I want to look at. I just want to look at the beginning of Exodus chapter 3. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I'll turn aside. I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. Now, this is when the Lord speaks to him and tells him, that he is to go and deliver the children of Israel. This is when God speaks to Moses and tells him about how he heard his people's cry and how they were afflicted and he came down to deliver them and he was sending Moses to Pharaoh. What was Moses doing when God shows up, when the angel of the Lord begins to cause this burning bush to take place to grab Moses' attention? Moses was working where he was, taking care of his father-in-law's flock. He was working. He wasn't sitting back trying to make up a scheme and a plot. He wasn't, you know, sitting back complaining about what he had to do. He wasn't sitting back doing anything. He was working, and he worked. He did this. What's his routine? This is what he did. He was taking care of his father-in-law's flock. Now, pay attention. This is when the call of God came to him. While he was being faithful where he was, doing what he was supposed to do. Now, let's look. After we look at that, let's go to... Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. Now here, we know that Elijah was a prophet of God. We know that he did many great works and, and God used him greatly. But at some point... He was told to go and anoint Elisha to take his place. He was, he was going to minister to Elijah, follow him. And when Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind, when he was take up, taken up in a chariot of fire, Elisha took over for Elijah. But where was Elisha when he was anointed? Where was he? The Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 19. Let's look down at... Um, Let's look down at verse 15. Now, you have to read this whole chapter if you are not familiar with it. But this was a time that, you know, God had performed miracles in uh, chapter 18. But in chapter 19, Elijah got a little weary. He was depressed. He was hiding out in the cave. He was complaining, right? But finally, God just tells him, get up and get back to work. And so when we get to verse 15, the Lord said unto him, Go return unto the, uh, on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you come, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphath of Abelmaholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So he's going to be the next prophet. He says, go anoint Elisha, right? So in verse 17, it says, it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, and all the knees that have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence. It says, he departed thence and found Elisha, this is verse 19, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with 12, with the 12, and Elisha passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. What was Elisha doing when Elijah came to anoint him, came to anoint him to take his place? He was found plowing 12 yoke of oxen. This is somebody who's going to be the prophet of God, a leader in a position, just like Moses. These are people that are, are being, you know, great men of God, being used by God. But they weren't sitting back thinking they were too great to work or too good for this or sitting back and waiting for the next or complaining about where they're at and what they have and what they don't have. They were working. 
They were doing what they were supposed to do where they were at. They were being faithful. Look in 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. This is right after God told Saul, had the, the message given to him that King Saul had rejected the word of God and God says, so now I've rejected you as king. So even though King Saul had not yet lost his actual position, God had already replaced him. God said he had chosen a man after his own heart to take King Saul's place. So he sends Samuel in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. He sends him to Jesse's house to anoint the next king, the one that will eventually take King Saul's place. Now, Jesse has eight sons. Saul, or Samuel went through every one of the sons and God rejected each one of these seven sons that were in the house. And it says in verse nine, then Jesse made Shama to pass by. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. This is the last one. So in verse 10, it says again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. These are the seven sons that were right there. Samuel's looking at them and God has denied each one of them. So it says in verse 11, Samuel said to Jesse, are here all your children? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And behold, he keeps the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Now the other sons were right there. They were present. They were in the house. They were waiting, right? But the one who was the anointed one, the one after God's own heart, the one that he had chosen to be king was David. What was David doing right before he was anointed? He was out taking care of the sheep. He was working. He was working. He was doing what he was supposed to do at his father's house. He was doing what he was supposed to do as his father's son. He was doing what he was called to do, what he was purposed to do, what his chores were, what his assignment was for the day. He was working. He wasn't in there going, well, what about me? And what's going on? And I'm next. And No, he was working. And if we're faithful where we're at, if we're diligent in the things that we were called to, if we're doing what God purposed for us, then we are able to receive what God has for us. If we stay on that path and we're diligent and we're consistent, I want you to remember Ruth, the story of Ruth. If you haven't read it, you can go read it. It's only a few chapters long. But Ruth was a widow, right? Her mother-in-law was a widow. Naomi, she had lost her husband and then her two sons uh, married Oprah, Oprah and Ruth. And then those sons died. So now Orpah and Ruth and Naomi were all widows. When Naomi went back home, Ruth said, I'm going with you. But when she went back, she went out into the field to glean for food. She went out there working in a field, and that's where she met her next husband, Boaz, when she was working in the field, gleaning for some food. She was working. She wasn't at the club. She wasn't out somewhere, you know, half-dressed trying to, you know, get a man. She wasn't somewhere saying, you know, uh, well, I'm going out with my girls because we about to go find us some men. She wasn't doing that. She was working. And this is the principle that we want to look at today is whatever it is that you're waiting for, whatever it is that has been purposed for you, whatever it is that you're believing God to do in your life, whatever dream or vision he's shown you that you may not yet be walking in, be faithful where you're at. Continue to do the work in the thing that you're doing. Maybe God has called you to something and you haven't seen it manifesting and you're wondering why you're in the place that you're in. You're complaining about your job, about the church you and the ministry that you're doing. You're complaining about what you don't get have what hasn't yet worked but guess what if you're faithful where you are right 
God will bring to pass the things that he has purposed for you because you're in the center of his perfect will. You are being a good steward over what he's already purposed for you and given you to do. And when you are in that place, it is then that God can increase you and expand you because you've been faithful over a few things. You've been faithful where you're at. The same thing happened with Joseph. He was faithful at Potiphar's house. He was faithful in the prison. In both cases, he was put in places that he shouldn't have been in in the natural sold out into slavery, lied on and put in prison, but he was faithful there. And it was in the prison as a prisoner that he ended up being called out to go to the king where he was promoted. He was in prison being faithful. And so I encourage you, whatever it is that you have been waiting for, working for, um, believing God for to come to pass in your life, be faithful where you're at. Do the right thing. Line up with his word. Be all, be, do everything heartily as unto him. You know, I've heard preachers out here, women preachers, telling women, well, you want to find somebody, you ain't going to find them just, you know, going to work and coming home and watching TV. You got to get out. You got to live. You got to go to the club. You got to go here. You got to go there. The same thing with the men out here looking everywhere for everything. But guess what? If you do what you're supposed to do, and you're where you're supposed to be. God it knows how to bless us where we're at if we're faithful. And so today, examine and look at what it is that you are waiting for to come to pass. Or even if you're just feeling uneasy where you're at, wonder why am I here? Why do I have to do this any longer? Why do I have to be bothered with them? Why do I have this job? How come I have to live over here? How come this? Why this? Take a minute to examine yourself and your situation. Are you being faithful where you're at? Because some people, you're ready to move to the next thing, but not until you've been faithful and grateful where you're at. When you've been faithful and you're praising God for where you're at, you know, the Bible says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. And so give thanks there. Praise God there. Be faithful there. Be fruitful there. Increase there. And then you can get moved to the next. We're going to close out in prayer, but that's the principle. What I'm telling you to do is to go back. Don't just read the verses I read. You read around them. It's some good reading. It's some good story. Read Ruth. Read um, uh, 1 Kings 18 and 19 uh, until you get to that part uh, where Elijah goes to Elisha. Um, read. You know, and go back and see, see how Samuel in first Samuel chapter 16 went and looked at the different sons. But then finally, it was the one that was out in the field. It was David who ended up being the greatest king that Israel had had. But it was because he was faithful, because he was diligent, because he was working. Moses was working. Joseph was working. Elijah was working. Ruth was working. Everything. Do what you're supposed to do, and God will bring to pass what he has for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name, and we honor you. We glorify you, God. We thank you. Lord God, help us to be faithful. Help us to be diligent, and help us to be thankful. <clears throat> help us to do that which you have placed before us, to be faithful where we're at, doing everything heartily as unto you, God. In our love for you, help us to walk in obedience. Help us, Lord God, Father, to have a grateful heart. Help us, Lord God, Father, to see, Lord God, Father, what it is that you have given us the opportunity to do. Help us to be fruitful, to be productive, to be beneficial for the kingdom. And so, Father, we thank you that you're purging us, that you are perfecting us, that you are molding us, that you are shaping us. Help us to be the women and the men of God that you purpose us to be, Lord God, that in everything you will be glorified and lifted up and that you would say well done thy good and faithful servant we thank you we praise love and honor you in jesus name amen god bless you don't forget to hit subscribe and to hit the bell if you want to be notified when i upload video praise the lord everybody god has given us two weapons in spiritual warfare two weapons that increase our faith and what are they we have prayer and we have the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and we have prayer. When you put these together, it increases our faith, the shield of faith. And this is how we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen, these scripture confession prayer clause connect and combine the word of God 
and prayer. And when you confess the word of God in your prayer, you can see God moving in the spiritual. You can believe him for signs, wonders, and miracles, healing, deliverance, restoration, soul saved, and lives changed. Listen, check out the scripture confession prayer clause at christianrap.bigcartel.com. We are a Christian lifestyle brand. Go and get your scripture confession prayer clause for yourself, for your family, and for your friends. God bless you.